Hi, this is Joe Ziemba, and I host the podcast When Football Was Football here on the Sports History Network. I'm also the author of the recent book, Bears vs. Cardinals, the NFL's Oldest Rivalry. These two clubs first met in 1920 and will be renewing that rivalry again this year on December 24th in Chicago. In honor of that occasion, I'm very pleased to announce that the Sports History Network will be offering two free copies of my book to its listeners. To qualify for this great gridiron giveaway, just go to the link at sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash Christmas 2023. That's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash Christmas 2023. Please enter by the closing date of December 15th so that we have enough time to contact you for a personal inscription of the book and then ship the book to you for arrival prior to December 25th. And as always, thank you for listening to the Sports History Network and good luck. The two-point conversion has become a thrilling element in football, adding an extra layer of strategic decision-making and excitement to the game at all levels. However, its history reveals a fascinating journey of experimentation and gradual adoption in the NFL, the NCAA, and the National Football Federation of High School Rules. We've talked more about it in today's episode, coming up in just a moment. This is the Pigskin Daily History Dispatch, a podcast that covers the anniversaries of American football events throughout history on a day-to-day basis. Your host, Darren Hayes, is podcasting from America's North Shore to bring you the memories of the gridiron one day at a time. So as we come out of the tunnel of the Sports History Network, let's take the field and go no huddle through the portal of positive gridiron history with pigskindispatch.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, my football friends. This is Darren Hayes of pigskindispatch.com. Welcome once again to the Pigpen, your portal to positive football history. And welcome to another edition where we get to talk about the history of the rules of football. And today, we're going to talk about the dreaded and anticipated two-point conversion in football at multiple levels. But before we get to that, let's make sure you're aware of our newsletter. It comes out each and every day, uh, totally free. You can cancel at any time, and it's easy to sign up for. Go to the show notes of this very podcast or the top of Pigskin Dispatch or jerseydispatch.com. And also, maybe take a look while you're on those pages as we have our book out, The World's Greatest Pro Gridiron Team, the 1903 Franklin All-Stars is out on Amazon, and we have a link on Pigskin Dispatch that you can check that out as well. Now, the story of the two-point conversion, you know it's that item that usually comes up at the end of a game where teams are down and they have an opportunity to to maybe catch up in the score or make it a three-point game or a seven-point game. But that's generally where coaches start to go for two-point conversions. Now, there was a trend probably five, ten years ago where maybe teams were trying a little bit more at the two-point conversion when they moved the extra point line back from the three-yard line in the NFL to the 15-yard line, making the kick just a little bit harder to, to obtain. But the odds still say to kick the ball, it's a better chance getting that one point easier than getting the two point. We'll go over the percentages of those in just a little bit. But our story of the two point conversion starts back in 1922. Uh, we got this from an article Timothy B. Brown wrote on footballarchaeology.com back a couple years ago. And Tim tells us that the awarding of one point for successful kick following a touchdown uh, or a running play, pass play, or drop kick 
was started back in 1922 at the college level. It was also adopted because all college rules were adopted by the NFL for about a, 10 years or so. And this remained the standard in college football until 1958, when the rules maker recognizing the need for offensive innovation and some scoring opportunities introduced the two-point conversion attempt. Teams could now choose to run or pass the ball from the three-yard line for two points, while a successful kick still earned just one point from those same lines. So you can see there's an advantage. A touchdown could go from six points to eight real quick with that two-point conversion. Makes a big difference in a close game. In recent years, the NCAA Rules Committee has modified the rules to say that a two-point conversions are mandatory after touchdowns scored once the third overtime session and beyond has been reached. You don't have to do it in the first two OT sessions, but once that third one, fourth and beyond, you have to start going for two. The kicks are no longer a valid scoring system. Now the NFL initially resisted adopting two-point conversion, you know, back in that 1958 season when college in eventually the lower levels, high school and below adopted it. The American Football League and it embraced it as part of its rule book from its inception in 1960 and during its nine year existence until the merger with the NFL. And it provided some valuable data that showcased the strategic potential of the two point conversion. In the late 1960s, as the merger talks between the NFL and AFL progressed, the NFL briefly experimented with a two point conversion in 1968. However, it wasn't until the early 90s that the NFL used it in NFL Europe and also known as the World League of American Football at some points. And they experimented with it more extensively and it got enough data where in 1994 that proving ground ended up leading to adoption in the NFL, uh, allowing them to see the impact of what it could do for the game. And boy, it did certainly make an impact. So in 1994, after the two-point conversion officially arrived in the NFL, uh, but with a slight twist, instead of the three-yard line used in college football in the AFL, the NFL opted for the two-yard line for the conversion uh, start to occur for both the kicks and the running plays going for two uh, at that point in time. As we just said a little bit ago, eventually, a few years ago, they moved it back for kicking to the 15-yard line, creating more of a challenging attempt. Now, the very first person in the NFL to score on a two-point conversion was Tom Tupa of the Cleveland Browns uh, when he did that very first honor of scoring that two-point conversion uh, in a 1994 week one game against the Cincinnati Bengals. So Tom Tupa became that as your trivia question when you're at your local watering hole. The most conversions of two-point in nature scored by one NFL player belongs to Pro Football Hall of Fame running back Marshall Falk, who had seven regular season and one postseason conversion to his credit. Hot on his heels is Alvin Kamara of the New Orleans Saints, who in the middle of the 2023 season has scored some, and it takes him up to seven total conversions in his career, and he could catch and overtake Falk at some point, even uh, during this 2023 season. We'll have to wait and see that. Now, the two-point conversion has played a pivotal role in some of the most memorable moments in football history, including it has been converted 10 times so far in Super Bowls which is quite exceptional. Uh, the most notable one of these is probably James White two-point conversion in Super Bowl 51 for the New England Patriots. Uh, it's how it stands as a prime example contributing to their historic comeback against the Atlanta Falcons in that wild finish. And then Danny Amendola uh, scored another two-point conversion in overtime to help the Pats overtake the Falcons after being down 28-3. to They had come back and win that game 31-28, Super Bowl 51. Pretty exciting finish there. 
Now statistically, studies suggest that the two-point conversion holds a success rate somewhere between uh, the low 40% and 55%, slightly lower than the single point uh, attempt with kicking it, which is about 90%. And the data informs strategic decisions with coaches analyzing the game situation and probability of conversion before making these crucial calls. Now, in fact, one of the coaches, a very famous coach, when he was in his college days, Dick Vermeil, developed the following chart uh, while coaching at UCLA in the 1970s. Now, we have the entire chart listed uh, on pigskindispatch.com on this particular uh, episode. And it basically says, uh, if you lead by one point, you go for two. Uh, and you know it goes right down the line. Uh, until you get to over 20 points, uh, you want to go for one. It's just, except for, you know, basically the only times you go for two is when you're uh, up by 19 points, 16 points, 12 points, 11 points, 9 points, and 5 points, as well as 2 points and 1 point. That's when you go for two, which is kind of a statistical and uh, how you want to do that. So a very interesting chart there. You can check that out, pigskindispatch.com. Now, there was also brought after the uh, offense being able to score two points on a conversion. How about the defensive two-point conversions? And the concept of a defensive two-point conversion emerged in college football in the 1988 season. And it first was committed that same year when St. John's defeated Iona College 26-24, marking the first instance of this feat in a college game. Since then, only one player, Tony Holmes of the Texas Longhorns, has achieved the remarkable feat of scoring two defensive point conversions in a single game, which occurred against Iowa State Cyclones in 1998. Twice in one game, that was one tired young man after that game was done, going you know, some 97 yards twice. Well, in the NFL, the defensive two-point conversions were not allowed until 2015 when the league owners implemented the rule. The first player to score a defensive two-point conversion in the NFL was Stephon Anthony of the New Orleans Saints, who returned a blocked extra point by Graham Gano of the Carolina Panthers on December 6, 2015. The following year, December 4, 2016, Eric Berry of the Kansas City Chiefs made history by becoming the first player to return an interception for a two-point conversion, picking off a pass from Matt Ryan of the Atlanta Falcons and taking it to the house. Now, they've modified the rules a little bit so the defenses cannot uh, willingly commit a penalty to try to set up uh, a two-point conversion return defensive two-point conversion so that is ruled out because you know how strategists would do that just to you know, try to gain an advantage but where does the future hold of two-point conversions now as the game evolves the two-point conversion continues to be a topic of discussion and debate some argue for adjustments to its implementation while others believe it adds a valuable element to the game i don't think it's going anywhere because it's become a solidified piece of the game but regardless of its future development the two-point conversions journey from its experimental beginnings to its current prominence underscores its impact with the ever-changing landscape of football and the need for fans to see scoring happening on the field. And that's uh, you know, quite a, a testament to what this uh, event in football is. And it's just an exciting play. And it's uh, you know going to stay, I think, because uh, it's very instrumental at all levels of football. Now everybody has a two-point conversion. And it's a good thing for the game. So hope you enjoyed this little bit of history on one of the elements of scoring in football, the two-point conversion. Hope you'll join us as we go through football history multiple times a week on the podcast every single day on pigskindispatch.com. And like we said, you can catch all of that in the newsletter as well as what's going on in Jersey Dispatch for a total well-rounded sports history daily in your email inbox for free. So till next time, everybody. Have a great Gridiron Day. 
That's all the football history we have today, folks. Join us back tomorrow for more of your football history. We invite you to check out our website, pigskindispatch.com, not only to see the daily football history, but to experience positive football with our many articles on the good people of the game, as well as our own football comic strip, Cleat Marks Comics. Pigskindispatch.com is also on social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all of your positive football news and history. Special thanks to the talents of Mike and Gene Monroe, as well as Jason Neff for letting us use their music during our podcast. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Have you ever noticed that the lower jaw is not protected in sports? Did you know that 10,800 concussions will happen today? This has been an upward trend for the past 50 years. I'm Dr. Michael Hutchison, a practicing neuromuscular dentist. When my son wanted to participate in football and rugby, I was afraid he was going to get a concussion. That fear led me to finding the missing link to reducing concussions. The fact is, the only part of the skull that is not protected in sports is the lower jaw. If you want to drastically reduce concussions, there are three basic jaw positions that affect concussions and two of them are not good. The correct one is called physiologic jaw position. It will dissipate the force away from the brain. Knowing that, I designed an appliance that put my son's jaw in the right place. And as a result, he was concussion free from fifth grade all the way to senior year. This jaw position takes those 10,800 concussions today down to 28. It's the key to concussion protection. As a parent, this is what you need to know. It's extremely important that the device you are using is on the lower jaw. Thickness of the device is important. Most importantly, it must position and hold you in your own unique personal physiologic jaw position. So if your child goes out on the field with the correct jaw position, your son or daughter will not one of those 10,800 concussions today. Get yours today at PowerPlusMouthGuard.com. Use the promo code POWERUP2023 for 10% off.